Hello. Olá. Uh, my name is Cristina. I'm a teacher from Aveiro, Portugal. Um, and I'm here to share with you part of my last year's project called Linguistic Landscape, Languages, Linguistic and Cultural Diversity in the Urban Space. Uh, this topic was developed under my master's degree in English teaching in primary education held um, at the University of Aveiro. First of all, let me just um, say that um, I'm sorry, but for personal reasons I could not be here live uh, as it should be but I will share my contact at the end of this presentation to clarify any possible doubts or questions you might have. So uh, now back to the presentations uh, uh, it's just a small uh, part of my last year's project as I said before and I will try to be brief um, because we don't have uh, much time um, and um, I will try to share with you some pedagogical resources and didactic ideas that you can adapt and um, and uh, use in different uh, educational contexts uh, if you want. So to begin, I think it's important to make a brief theoretical framework of the concept of linguistic landscape. Uh, as we all know, our knowledge of the world is built through the diversity of texts that surround us and that are part of the urban landscape. So this set of written texts exposed in a public space, both verbal or non-verbal non language, we, all, we call linguistic landscape. Uh, the first known definition of the concept was released in 1997 by the authors Laudry and Borges, uh, for whom the linguistic landscape was the language of public road signs, advertising billboards, street names, place names, commercial shop signs, and public signs on government buildings. Um, a few years later, this author headed uh, to the concept images, colors, and other visuals, as well as voices, music, and sound, and dynamic changes in the physical surroundings. Um, the same author considers that the main objective of the study of the linguistic landscape is to have another view to our knowledge about societal uh, multilinguism by focusing on language choices, hierarchies of languages, contact pheno phenomena, regulations and aspects of literacy. So, taking this, uh, or taking that, um, we can all agree that linguistic uh, li landscape is a multimodal concept that allows us to explore several different domains, which includes um, an educational domain. So, the um, educational approach to the linguistic landscapes on most words um, is a look is looking at the city differently, perceiving it with his entangled streets, avenues, squares, and buildings, has a territory of multiple plots and cultures, and therefore of countless educational possibilities. So, in this, um, within all the the possibility the possibilities that we we. We had to to explore. Um, I decided to explore uh, four four areas. Um, uh, with my students, um, inter interculturality, uh, multiliteracy, multimodality, and critical thinking. So, just to clarify, the exploration of the linguistic landscape in an educational field consists in the use of texts that are not pedagogical in their purpose, found daily in public spaces. So, this, uh, the main purpose of these texts is, is to read the world beyond, beyond the meaning of words. So, now... Um, focusing focusing on the practical part of my work, I start mentioning uh, the pedagogical didactic um, 
objectives that I expected to develop during uh, the classroom activities. Um, and the objectives are to develop awareness and knowledge about the coexistence, the coexistence of different types of languages, cultures, people, beliefs and interests in the city, to understand the English language as a bridge, to establish relationships with other cultures and languages, to build positive images and discourses in relation to plurality, linguistic and cultural diversity, to stimulate the ability to think critically about the society we live in. So, uh, looking, um, talking about uh, pedagogical, some pedagogical activities, uh, um, it's important to say that they were, um, uh, they were uh, made for the for a third year of schooling. Um, that is also the first year of English of um, uh, of these students um, in Portugal, um, and we are talking about um, eight nine year old children. Um, so the first activity um, was to explore students' representations, ideas, and prior conceptions of languages, cultures, and global relationships in uh, in the local community. Um, trying to to just to uh, to understand what uh, they. Uh, already know uh, about the place they live in uh, and um, if they actually pay attention or not uh, um, of what surrounds them. So uh, we'll start with the brainstorming with brainstorming activities. Um, I will make some questions uh, to the students. Um, about uh, about the place they live in um, in order in a, a, and in order to understand their own interaction with the other cultures um, after that we will will watch and explore the video educating cities um, after watching this video um, the, the goal is to explore um, students' thoughts and perceptions of some segments of the, the video related to life in the cities and intercultural behaviors. Um, we don't have time to see the, the, the video, so I leave the link below in case you want uh, to see it later. Um, and the last activity uh, is to show them some photographs of linguistic landscapes of the city of Aveiro. Um, this uh, last activity um, uh, is uh, oh, it's a way of introducing the theme uh, of the linguistic landscape, but also has an ex uh, results has an ex example for the next activity. Um, in the next activity, um, the students will be the detectives for a day. Um, they will be challenged to find, collect and gather photographic records that signal the presence of languages uh, in the city. Um, it's uh, the only thing they, they have to, to do. Um, it's just go for for a walk in the city with their parents, um, as they usually uh, do, but this time paying attention to what surrounds them and taking pictures. Um, they will, they can take pictures of advertising billboards, different signs, different languages, images, all that um, make them uh, think or uh, or see cultural diversity in their um, cities. Um, after after all the the photographs um, gathered, um, all all the all the photographs will, will be displayed on the classroom walls, um, so they can feel proud of their work. Um, and but only, but only uh, we only have we only explore uh, some some of the photographs uh, 
some of the photographic records collected by the students um, in a didactic way um, because we it's not possible to explore all the photographs um, and um, so uh, only a few uh, will be chosen um, and the selection of the photos obeyed uh, the pedagogical criteria mentioned before um, and it's important to say that for each photo will be made a set of questions that intend to develop the student's critical thinking uh, towards society uh, or towards the city they live in, but also build positive images and discourses in relation to plurality and linguistic and cultural diversity. Um, after this uh, activity, uh, the students um, will be drawing the landscape. Uh, they will be uh, doing the, their own graphic representation of languages um, in the city. They can choose uh, the part of the city they want. They only have to, to uh, write down the, the languages or um, the dialogues, the persons, um, the places they... they 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 want to to draw um, after that um, the next active the next and last activity will be recording a short statement about what they have learned or what conclusions they have reached and attitudes uh, towards languages and linguistic diversity um, the final video will be shared with the entire school community uh, so that these uh, teams can be worked on uh, by other uh, class classes and other uh, students um, because it's a very important uh, theme in in uh, nowadays uh, communities where we have uh, people um, from all the the world from so many places and it's important to know more about about these places about their languages their culture uh, in order to respect them um, so this uh, uh, now i will uh, share with you um, an example of the one of uh, one of the activities um, that it was drawing the landscape they will have to draw and paint the city in any part of the city they wanted they just have to um, to to identify the different languages or uh, the in, in inhabitants uh, dialogues so after that they will have to answer three uh, three questions um, about uh, which languages um, uh, they 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 choose uh, to to be on their drawings um, what the reasons that led them to choose, choose these languages or um, and what other languages um, what other languages they would um, like to see in their city, uh, the place they live in, and why. Um, just to share with you an example of a self-assessment um, that um, the students will fill in um, in the end of every every uh, session, um, and this is a way of. Uh, um, understanding uh, and evaluating um, the progress of the students if they are struggling with some some of the um, uh, some of the um, of the the, 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 the the contents or if they are okay uh, what favorite what activities they they like uh, the most uh, so we can actually adapt and do better the next time. So, um, I'm, it was a fast presentation of my last year's work. Um, I tried to I tried to gather some activities I thought interesting, but you can always contact me if you have any questions or just to share some ideas. Uh, this is my um, email address. Um, 
thank you for your time. Obrigada pela vossa atenção. Um, até breve. Tchau.